The Rubik's Cube was developed in 1974 by Erno Rubik. Erno was a professor of architecture in Budapest when he built his prototype cube. It was a solid cube that twisted and turned and had colorful stickers on the side. When the cube got scrambled, it was then that the Rubik's Cube was born. It took Erno over a month to solve the cube, and suspecting he was onto something, he patented the cube as a toy, calling it the Magic Cube. However, due to the communist regime, or how Winston Churchill famously described it, the Iron Curtain, which Hungary was a part of, all imports and exports were heavily monitored, so it seemed getting a worldwide release was unlikely to happen. However, mathematicians took the cube with them to international conferences, and a toy entrepreneur took the cube to the Nuremberg Toy Fair in 1979. It was here where Tom Creamer agreed to distribute the toy to the rest of the world and later struck a deal with Ideal Toy Company. Ideal Toys executives didn't like the name Magic Cube, as they felt it had overtones of witchcraft, and thus we got the Rubik's Cube. The game was first released as the Magic Cube in 1977 in Budapest, and later released to the rest of the world as the Rubik's Cube in 1980. The best thing about this game was that it didn't require a console, which is good considering people were still playing the Atari 2600 at the time, and video game consoles didn't come cheap. Rubik's Cube's story is that a colored cube gets mix-matched, and now it's up to you, the player, to fix it by twisting different parts of the cube until it is solved and each side is the same color designated. The gameplay of Rubik's Cube consists of twisting and turning different parts of the cube until the entire cube is solved. The cube was notorious for its difficulty, as not many people could solve it. There were reports of people hacking the game by removing the colored stickers and swapping them with others to allegedly solve the cube. Meanwhile, there are people who can solve the cube in a matter of seconds without any hacks. The current record at the time of this writing is by Felix Zemdigs, who solved the cube in 4.73 seconds. Rubik's Cube doesn't have any music, which is actually a good thing so that you can concentrate on just trying to solve the cube. However, some players do actually play their own music while solving the cube. Personally, I recommend listening to 80s disco music. The only problem with that is fighting the temptation to dress up as a zebra and running outside to start dancing in public. Critics were a bit harsh with the Rubik's Cube, as IGN and GameSpot didn't even bother to review the Rubik's Cube, whereas others criticized the game's graphics for only consisting of six colors. Despite the criticism, Rubik's Cube got several sequels, such as the 4x4 Cube and the 5x5 Cube. It even had a spin-off called the Rubik's 360 and the Slinky. However, the Slinky was said to be too linear and that after a couple of minutes, it only goes downhill from there. Rubik's Cube even got its own cartoon show called Rubik the Amazing Cube. The Rubik's Cube would go on to sell over 350 million copies worldwide, making it the best-selling game of all time. The game was so popular, it even got a cameo with Will Smith in Pursuit of Happiness. That's it for this episode of Game Overview. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to the Game Rangers for more videos.